So when we're looking at what is the discriminant, the discriminant is going to help us determine what type of solutions we have for our quadratic um, equation or function. So remember, when we first learned about graphing, there's, we turned out there was three different types of solutions we have. I'll just kind of draw three little graphs here. Okay. For a quadratic equation, we know that shape takes a parabola. So we could have an equation, like the parent graph, where there's exactly one x-intercept. We could have one where there's no x-intercept, and we could also have one where there's two x-intercepts. All right, so we could have one, none, or two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the discriminant because when applying the quadratic form, it's very helpful to kind of understand what types of solutions you're gonna have. So when we look at this quadratic formula, x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, all over two a, this is the big kind of formula, right? And not always when you look at this, when you're plugging in numbers, you're gonna say, well, you can sometimes find the, you know, the x-intercepts, but a lot of times it's very helpful to kind of know what should you expect to make sure you're doing your math correctly. You know? And a lot of times we'll say, you know, what type of solutions does the graph have where we don't even have to go through the whole formula. We can just be able to determine the discriminant. So the discriminant is very simple. All it means is b squared minus four times a times c. And what you can see is the discriminant is what is under the square root, all right? So there's a couple different types of solutions we're gonna get determining what our, what our discriminant is, all right? So our discriminant is right under our square root. So now we need to think about, well, what types of numbers can we take the square root of? So if our discriminant, if we can take the square root of the number, that means we have a square number, square numbers such as one, four, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, um, dot, 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 dot. We can keep on going up. As long as we're taking the square root of that number, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a rational number, right? Because the square root of 25 is positive plus or minus five, right? So we're gonna have two integers. So if it's a square number, then we can have two, what we call two real rational roots. However, let's pretend we have the square root of eight. Now the square root of eight is not a rational number, that's an irrational number. So if I have the square root of eight, then I'm going to have two real, it's still gonna be a real number, but it's gonna be irrational roots. Um, and let's call the discriminant, so let's call it D. So if I have D is a square number, uh, let's see here, okay, let's do D. So if D is positive and a square number, then I have two real rational roots. If D is positive and a non-square number, non-square numbers would be all the numbers that are not squared, like eight, seven, 11, 15. Then we're gonna have two real irrational roots. And just remember, irrational means that the number is just going to repeat infinity. Um, and let's say, what about if we have the number zero? Well, you can't take the square root of zero and obtain a plus or a minus, right? We know that the square root of 25 could be five squared or negative five squared. But the square root of zero, zero doesn't have a positive or negative sign. So you can't say it's zero squared and negative zero squared because zero doesn't have um, a uh, a positive or negativity attached to it. So therefore, if we have zero, then what we're gonna have is just, uh, sorry, we're going to have one real rational root, all right? And you can see that an example for zero would be up here, where we're gonna only have one real rational root. These first two would be examples here, where you could have your x-intercept being rational numbers, they could be like negative five and positive five. Um, or they could be like, uh, this could be like um, negative the square root of three and positive the square root of three, where they're irrational, but they're still gonna be two different roots. And then what about if we have our discriminant is negative? It doesn't matter if it's a negative square number, a negative irrational number, as long as it's negative, you're not gonna have any um, x-intercepts, so therefore we say 
you're going to have two complex roots. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is an example of what the discriminant is and what it tells us of our solution. Thanks.